Hi, I'm Sam Miller, your host for Cardstock Modeling. I've been trying to get my arms around what's the best way to share this craft. And I thought, well, let's start a series of videos about building just one project. And we'll talk about various aspects of it. Try to keep each segment down to three, four minutes. Uh, it makes it easier for you. And that gives you something to focus on one or two things for the, that short video. A few years ago, when I began cardstock modeling, I would have never have attempted a complex project that's right here like this. This is multiple buildings. It, it has wiring for lighting involved in it, specific signage that makes it look like real wood, other features such as interior shots with lighting on that, as well as a rear side with a metal structure under the roof. Pretty complex stuff, fun, but it takes a practice. Well, I thought we'd start with a simple structure. In this case, I've chosen the O-scale wooden ice house that was designed by Clever Brothers. You can find this model at the Clever Models website at www.clevermodels.com. What you're seeing now is their homepage and then I'll click down onto Shop for Model Kits. And this starts with their most recent offerings. And if we scroll down a little bit, here you'll see the small wooden ice house. And there's some background on the ice house that once was a freebie. It's very affordable now for a price of $9.95. Um, the reason I chose this is you can see that there's two, there's a main building and then an addition. But it gives you various features to work with and uh, doors, windows, uh, texture we can add for roofing. Uh, even the originator of this concept, who built a prototype model, added some, uh, the ice platform extension, which is going out. So what you need to do is just click on Add to Cart and it'll walk you through the paces. You can use PayPal or whatever. If you're like me, I don't know that much about an ice house. And if I'm going to build something, I want some emotional attachment to it, a little history, and, and find out about it. So I went online and uh, Googled a few things and I'll show you what I got. Hey, I'm Chris Troy, host of St. Clair County Risa's Moment in History. And I'm here at the Nolan Ice Museum of North America in downtown Port Huron. Now before refrigeration, all ice that was used by Americans came from the lakes and rivers that were located in northern climates. The Port Huron area, with its many inland lakes and river, became an important source for providing ice to the large commercial ice suppliers located in Detroit and Toledo. Rail lines that were located next to the river allowed huge blocks of ice weighing up to 300 pounds to be transported to major cities. Ice harvesting was one of the 10 largest industries in the United States at the time. After all, 90% of households had an ice box by 1900, so the need for fresh ice daily created a big business. First up, I went to Wikipedia. And They'll talk about ice houses, how they were constructed, whether it be wood, stone, or, or brick, and uh, that somewhere maybe in the 1700s, this became a phenomenon, or even around the world. There were even things called ice wars. And some examples, there's a, a, a very simplistic ice house that's made out of wood. This shows uh, a photo in New York City about the ice trade and how it developed and there were many ice houses around the Hudson River. Also found some other uh, examples on uh, Pinterest of wooden ice houses. 
or some more. This is an example of harvesting ice up in Minnesota. Here's an Amish method, uh, still in use today, of harvesting ice. This actually shows the Amish people at a pond and how they have a conveyor and to harvest blocks out of the pond. Lastly, this shows examples of differences between a Virginia ice house and a New England ice house. So after you've downloaded the project, which you'll get in a lot of PDF files and some files on instruction and, and some suggestions of how-tos, the first thing that I do is make a folder to put the printed files in. This helps keep things organized for me because you can easily get lost along the shuffle. Next, let's take a look at what's printed out. Here shows an elevation shot. Page two is shows this, um, the end of the house, some trim, some uh, detailing for uh, the ice doors and hinges. Another elevation shot of the shed attachment with its roofings, how the, the base is structured. Here are the sides. And here's the end cap. Also, what uh, Clever Models has done is give us some guides on how to, how to layer windows, which I felt was very helpful. And we'll go through that process in one of the episodes. Next, we've got a uh, a base support structure. Then here's the, uh, the stone walls and I'll get into show you how to we'll, uh, detail these walls. Give us some 3D re relief. Also um, we have the underlayment for the roof and the shingles and I printed multiple shingle pages because I'm going to do some, uh, add some layering relief for the shingles on the roof. Also in Photoshop what I've decided to do is to personalize this adding an extra window on one side. And here shows the window layers printed down plus trim for the side. Here is page nine, is uh, extra um, window layers to show how that's put together, which I've printed a second page of that to show for practice and to make sure I get it right. Uh, more foundation and interior support pages. And then lastly, uh, what I've done is I've created in Photoshop, taken from uh, Clever Models previous projects and modified it so that I've created corner braces and these are um, add a lot of structural support and I've created both one and a half inch and one inch legs to those and I'll be showing you how to use those in different ways. Before we start to cut and paste and bend and have some fun, I thought I'd do a quick review of the tools, supplies needed for, the, for any project. My go-to favorite is Elmer's glue. And what I use is one of these squeeze bottle dispensers as a cap and I will use a, a uh, sewing needle to keep this from getting clogged. You can really lay down some, some fine lines, as fine as this line right here, for uh, detailed glue. Next, for scouring, 
I use one of two items, a larger uh, box knife or an awl. It's nice for either creating points as well as scouring. Screwdrivers come in handy to, to help smooth some stuff out. I think this is a number 11 um, X-Acto knife. Always need for small rollers of different types. Piece of sandpaper occasionally. Uh, various types, I call them sort of tweezers and forceps in different shapes. Uh, here's a, a bent shape and, then the end, and here's my uh, uh, sewing uh, needle to clean that stuff out. Always some sharp pencils around. Um, and something to create a squared edge corners. I have a small square to make part of. So now that we have the basics under wraps, let's get started. Stay tuned for the next episode on what we'll begin with and why. And I urge you to go to the Clever Models website at www.clevermodels.com. Take a look at uh, the O-Scale Ice House, Wooden Ice House. It's a worthwhile project for under $10 to get started and you'll get some nice rewards with it as you're building it and when it's finished. Till next time, keep modeling.